It was exactly fifty years ago. We were all huddled around the radios and the television sets. Back where I come from, it was an extremely stormy day with torrential rains and flooding. But still, no one could be torn away from the television because a very important and exciting event was taking place. For the first time, people were landing on the moon and actually walking on the surface of the moon. I can still remember my great-grandmother wringing her hands and pacing the floor with so much worry, looking out at the big storms and saying, God does not want us to be up there on the moon. It was a time of fear for many, but it was a time of utter excitement for the whole world. In 1961, President Kennedy had set us the challenge and the goal. By the end of the decade, we wanted to have people on the moon. Indeed, it came to pass. Half a century ago, in July of 1969. What an exciting moment, especially for those three astronauts who made this unbelievable trip in the Apollo 11. We all remember these famous men. Neil Armstrong, the first to walk on the surface of the moon, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. After the Eagle, the lunar module, landed on the moon, Buzz Aldrin, the pilot of the module, got on the radio and spoke to the people of the world, saying, I invite all of you, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, to reflect on the events of the last few hours, and each in your own way to give thanks. And then, very privately, very silently, Buzz Aldrin did something remarkable. On the surface of the moon, he received communion. Now that was something he could not broadcast because the militant atheist Madeleine Murray O'Hare still had NASA in court over their reading from the Bible in space. She did not wish anything religious ever to take place in space. But quietly and privately he received communion communed with God on the surface of the moon. I find that extraordinarily moving and inspiring. Now, he was not a Catholic. Unfortunately, we cannot claim credit for that one. He was a Presbyterian, an elder in his church, and his pastor had prepared for him the communion kit. To this day, at his little church in Webster, Texas, they have preserved the chalice from which he took communion on the moon. And every year on this Sunday, this event is commemorated in a special way in that church as Lunar Communion Sunday. Despite all the busyness of his profession, Despite all the incredible excitement of the moment, despite all the tremendous responsibility and work, Buzz Aldrin took the time to commune with God. Like Martha, like all of us, he certainly must have been on that day anxious and worried about many things. Who wouldn't be? But like Mary, he was able to go beyond the action and labor of the moment. He was able to enter the moment's mystery, magic, and message. Like Mary, he listened for a higher voice and heard it, sensed the divine presence and embraced it. Like Mary, he chose the better part and it will not be taken from him. 
whether in the hustle and bustle of life or the fearful throes of death, on the surface of the moon or the remotest corner of the earth, that same voice calls out to each of us to be heard. That same presence reaches out to us to be embraced. Let us choose to hear. Let us choose to embrace. Let us choose the better part, for it will not be taken from us. It will never be taken from us.